we're gonna be a bunch of frozen Plutos drifting through space. We need the sun's gravitational pull to stay in orbit. You die, but then new life will blossom out of your ashes. Well, an average of 35 million miles is not my definition of close, but sure. A specific area in a star's orbit where a planet is not too hot for water to evaporate, nor is it too cold for it to freeze. Gravity, water in some form, an atmosphere, your temperature is deadly, your air is poison, and you're not hospitable to plants or animals. It just means that your core is active and your surface is shifting and crashing. So in a weightless environment, our muscles basically say, hey, we don't need all this extra tissue, let's all shrink. <laughs> if we don't work out in space, we lose around 1% of our bone density every month. If you have a steady orbit that isn't full of huge space debris you can't clear, you're fine. When two planets share an orbit, that usually results in either a collision or one of them being hurled into the sun. If we were tidally locked with the sun, who is the source of light in the solar system, then sure, we'd have a dark side, but we're tidally locked with the Earth, which orbits the sun and we spin around it. So that your rings may have originated from a moon that got too close to you, so close that gravity destroyed it. This moon's debris is what probably made your rings. This whole moon destruction thing may have been going on for billions of years with other moons that formed previous rings. I would shoot a laser from Earth and calculate the time it takes for the laser to return. How can my Earthlings become a type three civilization if you're gonna leave? Okay, so the moon pulls you in. And there's always one side of the Earth that's closer to the moon, right? Right. Very fast, actually. So the side of the Earth that's being pulled by the moon is changing all the time. But you're also rotating. So instead of looking like this, you look like this. You're always re-stretching because you're rotating. The moon's not being pulled to your center, it's being pulled towards this weird spot. That's what accelerates the moon into higher orbit. If we were to find a new star, the closest one is 4.35 light years away. We'd all freeze up on that trip, especially you. Plus, where'd we get the momentum? <laughs> the sun formed out of the same dust as us through intense gravity. If you repeated that, there'd be a whole system full of new planets and orbits, and we'd all get destroyed. My atmosphere is made of hydrogen sulfide. It's one of the smelliest chemicals, like in the universe. And a molecular cloud collapsed in on itself. That can't happen to us anymore. Unless you see any of those around here. He has the conditions to sustain life. He has liquid water. It's because Titan's Mountains are named after famous mountains from the Lord of the Rings books. Both made of rock, have atmospheres, volcanoes. What, volcanoes? The small planet orbits around the big planet, blah, blah, blah. But us, we orbit around each other. So our center of mass isn't near my center, but instead it's a bit further away. And the distance between you two is very large. The distance from every planet to the sun doesn't change much. And since my orbit is a lot closer to the sun than most of you, I'm never really too far away from any of you. If you multiply the rate of star formations with a fraction of stars that may have planets, and then multiply that with the number of planets that could sustain life, and then that with the average lifetime of a planet, we get, uh, Jupiter? At minimum. 1.4 billion planets potentially like you in our galaxy, Earth. The main theory of how planets are formed is called the nebula hypothesis. In short, when a nebula collapses, it releases a huge cloud that orbits a young star. Through a process called accretion, this cloud accumulates and creates... Planets! A planet must orbit a star, it must have enough gravity to be spherical, and it must have cleared its orbit from other big objects. Okay. So, the temperatures of Venus can rise all the way to 870 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead. A day in Venus lasts 243 days on Earth. And even if you wait all that time, the temperature is basically the same. The clouds prevent the heat from escaping, so you're inside a big oven. We're almost the same size and made of the same stuff. We're even pretty much the same temperature. Well, um, my orbit takes like 84 years to spin around the sun. Mine takes 29 years. Limit of the Kuiper Belt, so you'll eventually find him. Because my orbit is 165 years long. When your Earthlings were on the moon, the moon pulled them in, right? But you have stronger gravity, so you pull in the moon. And the sun's is even stronger and pulls you into his orbit. So why do some of us have more gravity? The strength of gravity is based on how much mass something has. And the more mass something has, the more it weighs. So something with stronger gravity is also heavier. Well, around 700 million years ago, I, I had good weather, habitable conditions, and, you know, 
surface water. If our universe was a simulation, we'd probably get those kinds of errors in the laws that make up our universe, like the laws of physics. But we don't see those errors anywhere. A crossing your atmosphere is hard, so we use different boosters that are then released once we're high enough. Uh, we also carry satellites and other cargo that, of course, is protected by these special capsules that bit can turn into small particles that may reach incredible velocities. It's like having tiny bullets flying around the planet, sometimes damaging satellites. If, if an object moves too slowly through a planet's orbit, it'll crash down into the planet. And if it goes too fast, it'll fly off into space. Your gravity barely has an effect on me. You're all too small. 1,600 miles. Yours? 1,600? and 35! Well, Venus is much denser than Mars and thus has a higher gravitational pull. That also means that the asteroids have a much easier time hitting him as soon as they enter his gravitational field. It's like he's pulling them in. The solar system is 287 billion kilometers wide! The solar system's very wide, but it's still a big disk. All the Earth's moon needs to do is continue to go down and he'll eventually leave the solar system.